I'm going to share with you my secret sin coming up. Hey everybody, this is Dana with the Wisdom Calls channel, helping you to understand the Bible better so that you can have a better relationship with God. Welcome to Bible study today. If you're new here, consider subscribing down below and don't forget to click the little alarm notification icon because we upload new content approximately three times a week. So you won't want to miss out on any of our new exciting video Bible studies. With that being said, I want to go ahead and jump right into today's topic. I want to reveal to you my secret sin. So when I was a kid, I had some issues with my dad and he was verbally abusive and had a really bad temper. And so I held grudges against him. I remember having a list of every time everything was done to me that I felt was unjust. And I had this list going on in my head. And every time I would get together with my friends, I would talk about it and basically share how, um, you know, I had that victim mentality, share how how horribly I'd been treated, wanting them to understand the victim that I had been. And it wasn't until sometime when I was older, I would say about high school age, when a friend of mine invited me to come to her church and hear a guest speaker come to speak. And the topic he spoke on was forgiveness. And that message really got to my heart. And one of the things that he brought out from scripture was that the Bible says that if we don't forgive others, we're not going to be forgiven. And that really cut me to my heart. And I just remember being terrified because I knew I needed to be forgiven. And yet this unforgiveness that I had, all of those wounds that happened to me, they had become part of my identity. And it was how I saw myself. And I saw myself as this victim that was hurt because of this, because of this, because of this. And I didn't even know who I was apart from those wounds. They had become such a part of my identity. And I remember um, being confronted with this message that I needed to forgive or I wasn't going to be forgiven. And I was like, I was stuck between this rock and a hard place. And before I share a little bit more of that story, I just want to go with you to the scriptures so that we can see what Jesus had to say, what the Bible has to say, and what Jesus had to say on this very important topic. So come with me in the scriptures. First, we're going to turn to Mark 11, verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your sins. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. And this is where Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He says, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. This is Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. See that? Forgive our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. So forgive us the same way we've forgiven others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In verse 14, he says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is really important for us to pay attention to because sometimes we think, well, Jesus died for my sins, so they're all forgiven. And he paid, he paid the price for your sins, but he also paid the price for that other person's sins. And if you're not willing to let their sins be forgiven, then how can you expect your sins to be forgiven? Jesus told a parable to his disciples about a servant who owed his master a large sum of, his, of money. And his master was going to have him thrown in jail because of the massive amount of money that was owed to him. And the guy pleaded to his master to give him mercy and give him time to pay off his debts for his sake and for his family's sake. And the master was merciful. 
But then when the servant went away, he grabbed a hold of someone else that owed him money and, and basically was choking him and saying, give me that money, demanding that money. And he wouldn't show the other one mercy as the mercy he had received. And so what then happened? The master came and had that person thrown in jail and he said he will stay in jail until he pays the very last penny. This is a warning for us. This is a warning for us. We must forgive if we want to be forgiven. And I would say this is the largest secret sin of the church. You know, other sins are more outwardly visible. If you're if you're saying things with, with your mouth that you shouldn't be saying, if you're going places you shouldn't be going, those things are outwardly visible. And so Christians might curb themselves in that because there's accountability. But who can see into your heart and know if you have unforgiveness there? Only God knows if you have unforgiveness there. Maybe some of the closest people next to you know if you keep bringing up the same hurts over and over again that other people inflicted on you. And I'm not saying they were right to do those things. They were not. They were wrong. But you and I were also wrong in the things that we send against God. And so if we desire to have mercy, if we have any expectation that we can have mercy from God, then we have to be willing to give that same mercy to others. And Jesus commands it. He says right here in verse 14, if you forgive other people, there's a big if there. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. It's conditional. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Let's let the words of Christ sink in because that may not have been what you were taught in church. But let's not side with the opinions of man. Let's not side with what sounds really good to our ears. Let's side with what Jesus has to say. Because when we follow after a Jesus that's not the Jesus of the Bible, when we follow after a Jesus that's been made up by pastors and preachers and other people that don't want to believe that Jesus ever overturned tables, that don't want to believe um, that Jesus called people a brood of vipers sometimes. If we don't want to believe in the biblical Jesus, then we're believing in a false Messiah. That's very dangerous. Jesus told him us himself in Matthew 24 that in the last days, dece deceivers would come in and attempt to deceive even the elect if possible. How can we know if we're being deceived? If the Jesus we worship is different than the Jesus of the Bible. It's easy and human nature to try to make God in our own likeness. But we were supposed to be made in the likeness of God. We need to change ourselves when we're different, when our thought processes are different from God's. We need to change them to align with God and his word. These scriptures, they might be cutting to our hearts, but we have to allow them to transform us. Jesus said, what good is it if a man looks into a mirror and then goes away and forgets what he looks like? Looking into the word of God shows us what reality is and shows us where we are. If we don't line up, we need to fix it. If you're looking in the mirror and you've got a piece of broccoli in your teeth, you need to work on getting that out of there. And in this issue, it's very important. And so I would say probably the biggest sin in the church is not pornography, although I'm sure that's large, but it's unforgiveness. And if we can get a hold of this church, there will be revival. If we can get a hold of forgiveness, you guys, there will be revival. Let's listen to this again because it's so important that we get it. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now maybe you feel exactly like how I felt when I heard that. I felt like I was between a rock and a hard place. I am hearing the word of God over here that I have to forgive, but i am got this hard place on this side of all this hurt, and how can I forgive them? Because what they did was so wrong. I remember being in that place, and if you're in that place today, I want you to seek God. I want you to go in your room just like he says and close the door and seek him. And what I did is I prayed to God and I said, God, how can I forgive him? How can I forgive him? I needed my father to be a father to me. I needed him to be like you, God. I needed him to be loving and patient and kind. 
And he wasn't any of those things for me, God. He didn't meet my needs as a daughter. He didn't meet those things. How can I, how can I forgive him? Because I still had those needs that needed to be met. And maybe you still have needs that needed to be met that weren't met maybe in the appropriate sources. Maybe your husband or your wife, they're not meeting the needs that you have. Maybe they're not fulfilling the roles that God put them in your life to fulfill. Maybe they're living in sin, just like my father was living in sin. I'll tell you what I did with my needs. I said, okay, God. And it's probably from him that I even got this idea, but I just said, okay, God, he can be my earthly dad, but I'm not going to require of him the things that I need from a father because he can't meet them. He, he won't meet them. He's choosing not to meet them. But I still have these needs. So who do I go to to have them met? I'll go to you, Lord. You, God, will be my papa. You will be my daddy. You will be my God, my father. I just pray that you will be the daddy and that you will be the father and that you will be all in all for the people who are watching this video today, God. I pray they would be able to forgive. God, I pray they'd be able to forgive. Lord, that they would forgive, God. Forgive the sins that have been committed against them. Those things that were done which were wrong. Lord, you saw each and every one of those things, those sins that were committed against them. You saw those things and you knew they were wrong. And those things, they sent a message to them, and that message hurt them, Lord God. That message may have said that they were unworthy, that they weren't valuable, that they weren't cherished, that they weren't loved. That message could have said a million hateful things, but that message that was sent, that fiery dart was a lie from the enemy, from the pit of hell. And God, in those moments, you were there. And you have different words to speak. You have different words to speak to us, words of truth and words of life, God. If you're hearing my words today, know that you are loved. The Father loves you. And one day he will wipe away every tear from your eye. Every single tear. He wants to remove from you those fiery darts that the enemy sent to try to take you out. He wants to put his healing balm and healing oil on top of those things. And he wants to heal you with his words of truth and his words of life. So you need to get into his word. You need to start reading the scriptures every day, even if it's just a chapter of a day, because you will be transformed. He, he has a message of love for you. He wants to tell you how much he loves you how much he cares for you, how much he plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for hope and a future. And I have news for you. I have news for you that the enemy's plans for you, they don't have to happen. I have news for you, good news for you, that God alone has the power to take even the thing that was done to harm you, to take you out, and he can turn it around for good. He can use those things which were meant to harm you and cause you to be an overcomer, as he has done in my life. I am healed from those things. Do you realize that I no longer carry around a list with me of wounds? I don't have them anymore because God healed my heart. I don't have that list to go down like I used to have. They have been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. And just like he has taken away my sin from me, that he has removed my sin as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers it no more. I remember those sins no more. I don't hold those things against my father anymore. I've forgiven him. And also other people that have, that have hurt me in my life. I get to forgive them, so I don't have to carry that around anymore. Because those hurts that were done to us continue to hurt us if we let them. 
If we remain in unforgiveness, they continue to hurt us, they continue to poison us, they continue to injure us and wound us and handicap us from the mission that God has for us. But I am so excited, you guys, because God takes those things that happen to you and he will heal your heart. He binds up the brokenhearted, he says. He has come to bind up the brokenhearted. If you are brokenhearted, he wants to bind up your broken heart. And he is going to use the testimony that he has in you, the miracle that he's about to do in your life through forgiveness. He is going to do such a miracle in your life that you will be able to share this with other people and help transform their lives. And truly the captives will be set free. And that is my heart for the body of Christ. That is my heart is that the body of Christ would be set free from unforgiveness and that they would have their wounds healed up, that they would be delivered from these demons that are oppressing them, handicapping them, these demons that have been allowed into their life because of unforgiveness. If you allow unforgiveness in your life, the Bible tells us it's basically giving Satan a foothold, a stronghold. We don't want to do that. Let's turn to that scripture. So Ephesians 4 verse 25 says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. So this is telling us that it's not sinful to be angry. We're all going to be angry at times. But when we are angry, not to sin. And the other thing is, is to make sure that we do not let the sun go down on our anger, not to remain angry, because in so doing, it allows the devil to have a foothold in our lives. We have to remember how great is the grace that God has given to us. You guys, no amount of sin that someone can do to us is as great. The debt that they owe us because of that sin could be as great as the debt that we owed God. I had a pastor once explain it like this. If you have a mosquito on your hand and you smack it, no problem. If your child misbehaves and you smack their rump, no problem. If your spouse, if you end up smacking your spouse, that's a problem. If you smack a police officer, bigger problem. If you attempt to smack the president of the United States, really big problem, right? So what's the difference? It's the same action in all of the different cases, but it's the authority against which the sin is committed. And so because we have sinned against an infinite God, our debt is infinitely greater than someone else's debt toward us. So when we have trouble with forgiveness, we have to remember how great is the grace that he has given to us, how much he has forgiven. And when we think about what life would be like separated from God, when we remember that it was while we were yet enemies with God, while we were spitting, with God, in, spitting into Jesus's face, that he died for us, that he forgave us, when we realize how great is his forgiveness towards us, when we realize how grateful and thankful we are to be forgiven and to be able to be in his presence. Don't let unforgiveness come between you and the presence of God. God says if you're praying and you have something against somebody, go and settle that matter with them first and then come back and finish praying. And I also want to encourage you, get the word of God into your hearts. This Bible study is helpful, but make sure every day on your own, you're spending time reading maybe even just a chapter of the Bible every day, because if you do, your life will be transformed. You will hear the words of life that you were meant to hear. You might not have heard them by anyone else in your family. You might not have heard them anywhere else in the world, but he has the words of life for you. The words that will set you free, the words that will heal you, the words will, that will take you up out of that wheelchair of being handicapped by the world's ways. And when you're being transformed, you're going to be a light to other people. And other people are going to wonder, what does she have? Because she's not the way she used to be. She doesn't behave. She doesn't behave normal. She doesn't be behave normally. She doesn't behave like how a person behaves when they've been wronged. We all know what's natural. But we need to behave supernaturally. We need to behave above what is natural. We need to have the character of Christ in us. Because when we become Christians, becoming a Christian isn't about saying words. It's about becoming new. 
So if you said words at some point in your life, but you haven't been changed, then you're not a Christian. Saying words doesn't make you a Christian. Having Christ's character in you makes you a Christian. Jesus tells us that it's you will know them by their fruit. You'll know my disciples by their fruit. So we need to behave differently. If we're behaving still as the world, that's a sign to us that we are no different than the world. We don't want to get to the end of days and have Jesus say, depart from me, I never knew you. But Lord, look at all these things I did for you. I even cast out demons in your name. I mean, he talks about miracles that people have committed, that have people have done in the name of Christ. And he comes to them and Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. Being a follower of a Christ, being a follower of Christ is not the outward deeds. It's who you are on the inside. Are you a child of God? Are you his? Do you look like him? Are you born of his nature? And when that happens, some people will be drawn to Christ as a result, and other people will be offended as a result, just as they were of Christ. And when they're offended by you, and many times it'll be those closest to you, because they're the ones most convicted by the changes they see in you. And they'll say things to you, like my family said to me, and like Jesus' family said to him. Jesus' family came to him in that, in that house we read in just the last video, where the house was so crowded, where Jesus was and his disciples were, that they couldn't even eat. And his disciples came there to take custody of him, because they said, he's out of his mind. And you might have people in your family that come to you and say, you're out of your mind. You can have too much of God. Don't fear. Take it in, as an encouragement to you that you're on the right track and you're following God. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will bring that to your um, spirit and you'll just be excited for what God's doing in your life. I want to thank you guys so much for joining our Bible study today. If you haven't yet, remember to subscribe down below and don't forget to hit that alarm notification icon because uh, we upload new content three times a week and you're not going to want to miss out on any of these awesome videos so full of the richness of God's word because it's meant to set you free and we're excited about that um, for you guys. By the way, our prophecy series has been getting great reviews. So if you guys are interested in end times prophecy, you want to know what Jesus told his disciples to expect at the end of days. If you want to know what the Bible says is the sign of Christ's return, that is in the scriptures as well. And so there's so much exciting material there. And we're going to be continuing that prophecy series as well. We're going to be having new videos on that. I believe next I'm going to be covering the book of Daniel or at least portions of the book of Daniel. And then hopefully at some point in the near future, we'll be talking about the book of Revelation, two of my all-time favorite books of the Bible. So until next time, I'm Dana with the Wisdom Calls channel, helping you to understand the Bible better so that you can have a better relationship with God. Have a blessed day.